just, I'm just talking to you, right? So. Yes. Okay. So, you know Alaska. You've been around a long time. Tell me and MTV about what's going on in Alaska right now that needs attention, help, and all those things. What's the state of the state of Alaska? Well, there's so many things going on. One of the, one of the things that really worries me is the, is the migration from the villages to the cities. The ISER, the, the Institute of Social and Economic Research for the University of Alaska, has come out with a report that, that documents that, and, and it's really, uh, it documents the movement in, in 2007. Well, we were in 2008 now, uh, more than halfway through with this energy crisis. It's even worse now. Uh, and I think that the impact on us of the increase in, in uh, the price of gasoline and fuel oil is just overwhelming. I'm very worried about our ability to react to that. The answer isn't to just pay people's bills and, and to go out to various, you know, and, and try to give them money. The answer is to find a way to create jobs so people can, can help hold themselves where, where they're moving to. They're going to move if they can't pay the cost where they are now. And as I think it's one of those really serious things that we have to work out is how do we create jobs in the places where they're moving to so they can support themselves. Absolutely. Hey, you guys, can you hold it down? Hey, who? Who? Bill. Hello. Bill. Hi. Little, little quiet. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. You rock, by the way. Thank you. So, um, what's going on in D.C. currently in in the works? Things that could affect Alaska, whether for the better or for the worse. Of course, the one thing we're trying to work on right now is finding a way to get the, uh, the price of the pump reduced immediately. I, I, I personally believe it's because of the speculation of, of the uh, in institutional investors, the people who are really managers of large funds, in, in the paper that represents all petroleum futures. And we believe that uh, the impact of the trading in those futures by people who have no interest in, in oil, they just have an interest in trying to make a profit off the movement of paper that represents oil, has driven the price of the pump up considerably. So we're trying to find, uh, Senator Feinstein of California and I are working on a bill to, to deal with uh, uh, speculation. We, we do believe that there are legitimate hedges that someone like a refinery that wants to buy a head a couple of years and try to hold down the price to the consumer, uh, they have a legitimate hedge. On the other hand, the so-called institutional hedges where they're, they're buying paper and they're selling it, uh, uh, it's just to try to move the paper. They, they don't have an interest in uh, oil at all in, time for using, in terms of using it. And they seem to be have total disregard for what the impact of what they're doing on, on the price of the pump. So we're, we're trying to really get a handle on that and convince people it must be regulated. The interesting thing about it is, is airlines, the CEOs of the airlines, wrote a letter to every one of their frequent flyers and told them they had reached the same conclusion Senator Feinstein had. They, in their letter, they say that most of this paper turns over as much as 20 times before it reaches a person who's going to, to ask for the delivery of the oil. So as a, as a consequence, they too are very alarmed. The price, of course, the price of energy for the airlines is getting so high that it's jeopardizing our transportation system. What it means here at home is, you know, Alaska, 70% of the places you fly to in, in the state, uh, you, that's the only means of transportation of those places year-round. Some of them might be able to be reached by a river, but that's a long way to go on a riverboat. But the, the modern communication in, our, in our, our, our villages and our small cities is is by air. And, and many of those small air airlines, uh, air carriers really, the commercial small operations are folding up now because they cannot survive uh, uh, with this uh, price of of aviation fuel being as high as it is, and the people in the villages can't afford to fly. That's one reason they're moving into town. So I, I really think that the, the energy crisis is hitting us worse than any Americans, and we're working night and day to try to find some way and to bring about a short-term solution. But more than that, we think we have to move now into uh, the next generation of, of, of energy resources. And I was up to Chena Hot Springs and, and saw Bernie Carl's geothermal plant. Uh, we're working on trying to trap methane as it seeps out of lakes uh, along the west coast. It can be put right into a generator and, and burned. We're, we're working on uh, looking at some of the old hydro projects and, and trying to convince people not to oppose them. They, all of these uh, were things we, we tried to do in the past, but they were opposed by people who are against uh, development, and, and particularly exploration and development for new oil. If, 
it's a sad thing, but if President Clinton had not vetoed the, the bill to provide us access to the Arctic Plain in 95, we wouldn't have this problem, really. Uh, our pipeline is designed to carry 2.1 million barrels a day. It's carrying less than 700,000 barrels a day. But even at that rate, because the price of oil, we've got a windfall income here as a state. And I did appear before the state legislature and ur urged them to think about how to invest that money, not just put it away in a bank, how to invest it to create jobs now and to take us into the next generation uh, of projects that will provide renewable and, and, and alternative forms of energy for Alaska for, for generations to come. And we are working on those. And I think uh, I spent some time with Bernie Call and others, uh, with Mayor Whitaker here in, in North Star Borough. He's the leader, really, of the, of the proposal to bring about a coal to, to liquids plant at, out on Isleson. Now, that, that is possible. Uh, South Africa does make uh, liquids from coal. We have never done it in this country. And there are, new, there are new, pro, new processes now that could be used, and we're going to move forward in terms of trying to get a coal to liquids plant here and a coal to gas plant down south of the range, to, south of Anchorage, uh, where the Beluga coal fields exist. So we have a lot of, go a lot of things going on here now, and uh, I think more and more people are waking up to the fact that we can't wait for someone else to do it. We have to be the, the movers ourselves. So I'm delighted, really, at that, that, that what I've seen on this trip home because I think Alaskans are trying to find a way to solve the problems themselves. You touched on a, an array of subjects that I was going to ask you about, and you did it anyway, um, which is great. Uh, tell me a little bit about um, strides and progress being made on climate change in Alaska, since that's a topic that lots of young people are concerned about. Well, we're worried about the overreaction of people from outside, witness the thing about listing the polar bear as being uh, 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 threatened. We, we think that was done by people who just want to use that status of the polar bear to challenge the exploration and development of new resources for Alaska. Uh, and, and we see it now, uh, ever-increasing opposition from these people. They are not Alaskans. They're people from outside of Alaska coming to Alaska and filing suits as though they really represent Alaska. So it's, it's a difficult thing. We, it takes me back to the oil pipeline. People forget the oil pipeline was held up four years by, from, by, by the same people. Uh, Congress finally had to stop that litigation and say, go ahead and build that oil pipeline because the country needs it. That was a 49-49 vote uh, broken by the tie broken by the vice president then. Uh, we don't have the same national understanding that energy is a matter of national security. Now, that worries me a little bit. Is there anything else that you want to add on or talk about or anything like that that you really want people to know? I think most Americans would be interested to know the depth of our feelings here about the, the environment and how, how we really are, are we're so attuned to our own environment. I think too many people read about the extremes of our environment and don't read a, a, enough about the, 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 the trend line of the environment. It is getting warmer. But at the same time, in some places, it's getting colder. We have almost as many glaciers that are advancing as, as those who are which are receding. But you read about the ones receding, you don't hear about the ones that are advancing. And I, I think there's a balance here in Alaska that doesn't exist el elsewhere as far as global climate change. We do have change, and we, we're, we're learning how to adapt to it. But we, 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 we are, we're harmed by people who want to take part in, and, and try to prevent uh, us getting, uh, say, the new, new forms of energy uh, uh, in the thought that they're protecting our environment. They're not. We know how to protect our environment, and we, we protect it best by assuring that our people can have a, a, a modern a style of, of living with the least possible damage to the, to the environment. We don't really, I, I really get upset when people don't understand that we're the ones that really set up many of the, of the guidelines for how to protect the environment in Alaska. And unfortunately, they, they, they often don't realize that and come in and try to challenge our, our exploration and development of new resources just to meet our needs. I have one more question. Just thought of it. Uh, thoughts on the progress of Iraq? Obviously, some people have come out and said that the surge made progress, that it did a good job. Uh, the president starting to take a look at timelines of withdrawals. Your thoughts on that? I do think that. Uh, I've been over several times. I do think there's been change. It's, it's positive change. 
Uh, I think that we're, we're witnessing the action of, 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 a, of a nation now that's getting to know itself and, and wants to wants to have uh, control over its own future. I, I applaud that. I think that uh, we ought to listen to them. But we, we ought to at the same time recognize that it, it, we, we cannot leave that area and leave it destabilized because there, we have other allies there in, in, in the area. And, and I, I think, you know, Israel is a good example. Well, Israel got to the point where it could defend its own self, and it is defending its own self. I think our goal ought to be that we will know that as we leave Iraq, they can defend them most themselves, and we will not see another uh, en engagement, another kind of a attack on Iraq from outside of Iraq that they could not withstand. The key to it is being able to defend themselves.